So I tried to record this video two times now. One was just too long and I was kind of rambling on some parts. Another one, when I changed some settings or wherever, the video sounded too muffled. So hopefully the audio for this video sounds good. Let me know what you think about this microphone going into the Beacon Studio with the current settings I'm running. And hopefully everything turns out good when I go to edit because I'm taking too long to do this because I have to live stream. With that being said, I'm going to be talking about the background of my YouTube studio slash streaming room or wherever. And so many people have said that they like the background. They think it's really cool and stuff like that. So I figured why not go over some things before I really change things up in 2025. I plan on making some drastic changes to the back wall that you're seeing behind me right now so everything that i'm going to be talking about today will be listed in the description and it's going to be in different categories on the amazon storefront page and just know i'm an amazon associate so i make some money off those links or wherever if you purchase anything at no cost to you and it helps out the channel if you don't want to use the links that's perfectly fine you can find out the names of the stuff that i'm talking about and go ahead and purchase it on your own time or with your own money in a different place if that's what you want to do and just know that some of these things or wherever are going to be on stuff like Timu or something like that on several different items because that's the only way to really get them or wherever or maybe some AliExpress or somewhere else or wherever. So just keep that in mind as well, um, especially when it comes to some of the Amine stuff that I have. And with that being said, it's all going to come down to personal preference. A lot of the stuff when it comes to the RGB stuff that I use in my room because I don't like Philips Hue. I've heard too many things are bad about them wherever and issues people have had with them and they're just way too expensive for what they offer and the offerings that I find for what I'm looking for is very limited. That's why I don't go with them. Nanoleaf is really expensive. They have some really cool, unique stuff and they're always innovating and come out with cool stuff. But for price to performance and what they offer is not what I'm looking for. And I just don't see the reason why paying so much or whatever for the products that they have, even if they're really cool and awesome and they got really cool stuff that differs from Govi and Philips Hue and all these other companies. I just personally don't see the reason why to go with their devices when they cost that much. It's just, and especially when it's not stuff that I'm looking for, they look cool in setups. You might love them. You might like them and stuff like that. They might work well for you. If you got the money for them, go ahead. I have the money for them. It's not a problem. It just they don't fit what I'm looking for and the aesthetic that I'm going with. So I just decide not to go with them. That's just a personal preference. Your personal preference might be different. You might not like Govi or Nanoleaf or Philips. You might go with a different company all entirely. Again, this is going to be subjective and personal preference because this is going to be your own setup and what you want in it versus what I want in my setup. Another thing is a lot of people hate my setup because it has too many moving lights and it's too distracting when they're trying to watch the video, etc. I don't know what to tell you. I don't have a short intention span like that. And to me, it doesn't bother me. And finally, it's my setup, so I can do whatever the hell I want to. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch my videos. You can keep moving on. But I keep getting people telling me in the comment section on some of my videos about it. And it's like, why watch the video if you don't like it? You know what I'm saying? Move on. Like, why you keep on trying to forcefully tell me to change my setup so you can like it? It's my setup. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to come into your room and tell you to change this, change that, and the third or whatever, because it's your setup. So with all that being out of the way, Let's jump into the setup. First off, it's going to, we're gonna start with the Govi curtain light. This is the version one. They came out with the version two. I plan on getting the version two, a two pack of them for around $200 wherever on Amazon. I'm gonna tear down everything that's on this back wall and just put up the whole wall just to be the curtain lights because that's what I really want in the future. And that's what I'm going to do in 2025 is eventually get my hands on it and do that because you can hit, you can hook up to like three of them, I think. And they only come in a pack of two, at least on Amazon. And that's what I'm going to do. The version ones are perfectly fine. You can get two of them. They won't hook up to each other, but you can sync them up in the app and you can display certain things. But there's a lot more customization options. Not only that, but a lot more uh, stuff from the actual company or wherever on the version two within the app. With the version one, you still get some cool customizations and cool little pictures and stuff like that. You can draw and make your own or even use the DIY section to use what people have made in the community or wherever and download them and save them into your DIY section. It's a really cool thing or wherever for your backgrounds and it makes it super simple and easy for having a very unique background, not only for YouTube videos, but your live streams. And a lot of people always talk about the curtain light or wherever they always like it, like it. But it's like, I don't know how people don't know about this because it's been out for so long. But every time somebody sees it, they always say it's cool. They always ask me what it is, all that stuff. And it's like, you are like, and most of them already have like a Govi product. And it's like, how do you not know about this? And this one I've seen on sale multiple times for around a hundred dollars, wherever for just one. And I think that's a really good deal for price to performance and what you're getting. 
it's just that I want the version two to be one plug and just going into a wall outlet and be uh, less cement outlets being used and less power draw and all that stuff versus like what I'm doing right now. So um, that's what I'm gonna do in the future as far as changing that up. And then next to it, we have the Gobi little light bars or whatever that people use in their setup a lot. Um, got two of them. This is the pack that doesn't have the right corners. It's a cheaper version or whatever. Those go on sale all the time on Amazon or on their website. Definitely check them out, watch the sales and stuff. I just don't need the right corners. That's why I went with those. But in my personal opinion, I want to move them or potentially just take them down or wherever. And I don't know where I'm gonna put them, but I still would use them wherever if we decide to move, when we decide to move or wherever, I would use them in a new setup. I just don't know what I would do with them right now once I take them off and put up the new cur curtain lights from Govi but I'm still gonna hold on to them and figure out what to do with them in a setup. The hexagon panels from GoView, wherever, those are the very first versions. Um, there's like two or three other versions out now that GoView has made over the years after I purchased those. Those have damaged the walls or wherever behind this YouTube studio setup as well as my streaming setup or wall behind that because I had them in different positions or wherever when I rearranged my office so many different times because I have bipolar type two. So my setup always is evolving and changing because I would just wake up one morning and be like, I don't like it anymore. Let's just completely rearrange everything. Um, unfortunately, that's that's one of my bad habits. Um, but yeah, I, I just I would never use these again. I probably would just end up selling them just because they damage the walls and the rental company I go through. We've been with them for years, multiple apartments and stuff like that. And we just noticed the tactics of this rental company since they're the most cheapest one as far as like price to uh, what you get and um, the cost of living where we live at and everything like that. They're the cheapest ones, but they do a lot of bare bones maintenance and stuff like that and they purposely do stuff to where you have to pretty much lose money on your deposit or pay for damages and stuff like that and i'm not gonna get into it or wherever there's probably some le legal ramifications i could get them for but at the same time they're a company they're gonna cover their ass and stuff like that so there's probably nothing could be done but just know that they they use a lot of cheap stuff in order for you to damage the walls or whatever. If you nail something, you hang something up or whatever, they know what they're doing. Anybody who's rented, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, so I just wouldn't recommend those or wherever. They're probably gonna damage the wall when I take them down to put up the curtain light version twos, unfortunately, but that's just a drawback again of those panels. And yes, it's the, the sticky substance that you can get from Gobi and I took them off correctly and everything like that and they still damage the walls because of not the product itself but because of the type of wall and what they do wherever for painting and all that stuff wherever it's clearly that to me the aesthetic and what i like wherever i'm just over them at this point i just they're com at least the version that i have wherever the cumbersome to set up they're really annoying to move around and stuff like that there's not there's very limited on the colorways and what you can do because again this is the cheapest option from them as far as these hexagon panels go and they have better ones out there now that i would lean towards more so if i was going to get them but at the same time they're way more expensive and i just think covering a wall or making a cool design you're going to have to get more than just the starter kit that i have here and i just at that point rather go with the curtain lights because they're just going to be more useful and price to performance and the usability of them and everything i would just go with the curtain lights because again less intrusive as far as like potential wall damage and on top of that in my personal opinion they cover more surface area so they're going to be better for you and your backdrop for uh youtube videos or live streaming enough about that let's stop talking about it above it is this zenitsu scream reenactment or wherever it's pretty funny it's pretty cool i'm pretty sure i got that off of uh timu it's either timu or aliexpress i don't know if i could find out i'll try to leave a link to it in the description if somebody likes zenitsu or demon slayer or something like that i think it's just really cool and i just have it up there it's just because i'm a fan of demon slayer and zenitsu is my favorite character i know too mainstream or wherever you can say what you want to say about anime um but right above it i have uh norcal that's not me being from California or anything like that. I'm a part of NorCal Rising, which is a uh, subsidiary or a, uh, I would say lesser organization. And the parent organization is actually called NorCal, which is a esports organization. It is a content creator organization that uh, 
obviously deals in content creation. They have a lot of people who do, you know, esports gaming like uh, Fortnite, Apex, Call of Duty, all that stuff. And some people even vlog and do all that stuff. Some of them are well, I'd say, established content creators and stuff who are a part of the organization. And again, I'm part of No Cow Rising, meaning it's just a, a growth org wherever to get better and to grow as a content creator and then potentially join uh, NorCal in the future. And yeah, I'm a part of that. I'm also part of Valkyrie Array which is a esports organization that I am one of the stream leads or content creator leads for the organization. And we're building up right now to bring content creation to a uh, YouTube channel. And we have people on Twitch, kick stuff like that. We're going to be putting out content creation, like videos and stuff, talking about maybe a podcast that we're talking about uh, different highlight videos for different video games, popular video games. We do like call of duty montages. You know, we have people, we have like a Valorant team, um potentially like apex team we have a, a call of duty sniping team and stuff like that definitely be on the lookout for that in the future uh next to it i have a white shelf that's from walmart that you can find for like 20 40 bucks uh but depending i guess on which color variant you get and if it's available in store or not um attached to it i have a viltrox i would say pixel light tube and i have one attached to my streaming desk as well i've used those for backdrops of my videos as well as a backdrop uh, to splash light on a backdrop where from rube for product photography for b-roll and stuff like that the rube backdrop i've done a review on i'll leave it linked in the description fantastic one i think it's very essential to people who are going to be doing you know product reviews or taking shots of products or something like that or even portraits or even if you just want to use it as a background for your live streams or your youtube videos getting the neutral gray color that i got allows you to make that backdrop any color that you want if you use an appropriate light to splash light on it and it's very versatile and very uh i would say accommodating to people who are just starting out for content creation i highly highly recommend this backdrop uh honestly that's just my honest opinion about it next to it is going to be the cb 200c from newer i usually have a bigger softbox that's hidden in my closet that i attach to the front of the light and use that light to shine lights on the uh, i would say the products and stuff like that to give it a little bit of a spotlight and then have you know the colored background or whatever with the backdrop mixed with the pixel tubes i'll probably do a review on it but just know that these pixel tubes i don't know if i fully recommend it because the app gives me a lot of frustrations and problems so i don't know if i'm going to do a review on the future i i just still haven't decided yet because i'm not really reversed in this uh say type of technology when it comes to pixel lights so i don't know if anybody would be interested in it but there are the cheapest ones that i could find that are functional at least somewhat functional uh on amazon so i'll leave a link to it in the amazon store page under the rgb section but just know your results may vary your frustrations probably will vary um just giving you full fair warning around the ceiling of my office as well as around the ceiling in my bedroom and in my living room, I have uh, these dual spool, spools of uh, Govi strip lights. Very basic. You can find them even in Walmart. I think they're about fifty dollars for the dual spool, and I think like thirty dollars or wherever for the single spool. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're fantastic lights. A lot of customization within the app. They're not the diffuse versions. I got this way, way, way before they came out with the little diffuse versions attached and a little separate diffuser that you can go up and put those up now. I am not doing that. That's too much work to do in every single bedroom and all that stuff. And I just don't find it useful because I don't care about seeing individual LEDs, but people do. So if you want to just know that there are diffusers available for these light strips, or you can just get the diffuse ones that Govi has come out with now. Um, it just depends on your use case scenario and what you want to do. The white shelving unit just has a lot of products that I've purchased or companies have sent out. I need a better storage option. So if anybody has a, a suggestion or tips or wherever, you can let me know down in the comments down below. I know a lot of people go with the Husky workbench or wherever thing, but it's super expensive, but it would be useful because it, I think you can lock it and stuff like that. And I have a little one at home and he sometimes come into the room. So I don't want him touching stuff. And I want something that's going to be able to obviously store a lot of stuff. But again, that's a little bit pricey for me right now because I think you can get them for like a thousand bucks or something or dang near close. And I'm not trying to spend that much money on a single item, but again, it would be something useful. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but if anybody has some other suggestions that I could probably take a look at, then let me know. I'm not looking for something that's super tall. I have been looking at cabinets potentially or wherever, some kind of cabinet, 
but I, I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, as far as like space and all that stuff goes so any suggestions just let me know in the comments down below um but yeah that's pretty much what's on that actual storage shelf is just random stuff um next to it is a mini fridge that I got from Amazon you could probably find ones that are going to be better because these ones that were made for like foreign countries so they're different shelves or wherever for different size cans and all that stuff you could probably just go to Home Depot Best Buy Lowe's or something like that and pick up a mini fridge probably for a little bit cheaper and on top of that at least it's right there so if you need to return it you know what I'm saying you don't have to go to hassle with Amazon and all that stuff um on top of it is a humidifier from Govi don't have a problem with it really good if the room gets dry or something like that do a little mist perfectly fine it's not one of those that you can put scents in it or wherever unfortunately but they do have a different model that allows you to do that but then you have to get these little things from them and all the, it's just too much so i just got the basic bare bones one um and then next to it is another storage cubicle thing or whatever a little bit more expensive than the little shelves but it's just two little bins that i can put all of my cables in like usb cables a whole bunch of extra stuff or whatever for content creation like zip ties all that stuff um on top of it i have a little cactus plant that my wife got me years ago now really really cool thing or whatever it's like a squid with his heads missing and then you just put the cactus in it it's pretty cool and it's just like waving uh next to it is a rgb thing that i covered in the past or wherever i don't recommend it so i'm not even gonna link to it but it's from Co uh colo or colorway or some, something like that i did a review on it a long time ago like probably two three years now ago um, the app is very janky. It takes forever to set up. It took me hours and hours just to get the app working and registering and finding the device and syncing it and all stuff. This one of the worst devices I've ever did a review on. I do not recommend it at all. Um, on the back wall behind that is the Tonar sound panels. I don't know how well they do as absorbing sound or dissipating sound, whatever you want to call it, removing echo and all that stuff. But I thought it was really cool because you can put LED strips inside and that's what I did. I did not use the LED strips that came with them because they get too hot and I talked about it in my review. I think that they're potentially a fire hazard, but they come in a pack of 12 and 6 if I mean remember correctly and I think the pack of 12 is like 50 60 bucks and if you can get one, them and cover the whole entire wall because they're huge you could put like a dual spew of uh the Govi uh lights or light strips or whatever in it and you could cover a whole entire wall and have a very unique design similar to what I have going through them and of course you're gonna have to make sure that the light strip is not too thick and if you wanted to diffuse the one or wherever you have to make sure that it's not too thick or wherever so it can actually fit because these light strips barely fit in the channels and the diffusion on the actual hexagon panels that go around it diffuse the light it's not really that good it's still very obviously you can see the individual leds even if you use their light strip that comes with it and um I just think for about 50 bucks or wherever, getting multiple of them and covering a whole entire wall because they're self adhesive and apparently don't damage the wall when you take them off. I have not tried to take them off because I just don't need to. I don't know because it's probably going to damage my wall just because like I talked about earlier with the rental company. So I, I don't know. Your results may vary. I haven't tried yet, but they've been stayed up there for a long time haven't had any problems or issues with them i don't know if they do anything about sound like i said reduction or anything like that but they look really cool they're definitely different than what you would see for acoustic panels out there or wherever as far as i can see there's only one other company that has some kind of rgb hexagon thing like this that's not like your traditional hexagon panels and stuff but those are very very bad reviewed whereas this one like i said i think it's cool work any setup other than that I just got some, again, Zenitsu stuff on the storage shelf or wherever, like Funko Pops and a little tapestry and stuff like that. Just, you know, regular stuff you will see in a setup. And then next to it, I have my portable AC unit. I don't recommend this one just because it's not really accurate as far as like the temperature thing inside the room, but it does its job or wherever once you manipulate it in the actual app that you can connect to the actual AC unit. But unfortunately, this model is no longer being made or wherever, but I got it for like 100 bucks. But the newer model of this one is like 200 and something close to 300. So your, I would say, experience may vary. I would suggest going with a different one entirely. So I'm not even going to leave that one in the, in the actual Amazon storefront page um, just because it's not really relatable, I would think, for most people. And then next to it is another storage shelf from Walmart, same white three shelf one. Um, it just has all my wireless, I would say lavalier systems, as well as my microphones that I use, about like 13 of them that I have down there. And then on top of it is a router 
that's hooked up to a uh, backup battery kind of generator thing. So if the power goes out, cause we've had issues with that, especially this year with tornadoes and stuff like that, that it will automatically kick on and it will keep the internet on. As long as the internet doesn't go out, it will keep the internet on and it has batteries and stuff like AAA, AA attached to it that will um, you know, stay charged and stuff like that if we need to use flashlights, etc. And then right next to it on the actual storage cubicle, I have all my batteries, the NPF batteries, like charging station or wherever uh, for all the stuff that I need next to that is going to be my Alpha 6100 that I use for sometimes pictures and stuff, as well as all the lenses that I have, like the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, the Sigma 30 millimeter lens, the Yongnu 16 millimeter lens, and like two kit lenses or wherever for the Sony cameras and stuff like that. And lastly, attached to that storage unit, I have the newer light wand that I did a review on not too long ago. It was around 87 bucks. It's very versatile as far as having the RGB colors, some special effects that you can use, as well as having the daylight color temperatures and stuff. And I mostly, mo mostly used it for like the product B-roll and the product photography and stuff like that. And sometimes I'll turn it towards me for this kind of shot for extra fill light or whatever to fill in this side sometimes but right now it's just splashing light i would say in the corner of the wall for my live streams or whatever to add a little bit more color to that space or whatever so it's not necessarily a dark void while i'm live streaming for that angle but in the future i probably will just put one of the pixel tubes over there and just leave it there and get another light wand from newer and put it in the back like i traditionally had it back here used to in, a, in the past videos for that purple light back there i'll probably get another one and get a blue light going on this side just because i like the way it spreads light just a little bit better for b-roll product shots and this kind of angle than i do the pixel lights the pixel lights are still useful useful but it's just those white light wands or wherever and i know newer has their own pixel lights but the light ones i think are just more conducive to what i do and what i would find useful in my setup so it just varies but again it'll be linked in the description with all the other rgb stuff that i use so yeah that's pretty much it i forgot to mention on my office door it's just like this little shoe rack thing or wherever that you're supposed to use for shoes or wherever and you put on a door i just have random bits and bobs and stuff like that for personal irl stuff it's nothing to do with content creation i just put it there so it's not hanging on my closet door i know this is not like traditionally what you see how people do their setup videos they do all this fancy b-roll and all this shooting and stuff like that and they'd be like oh i spent twenty thousand dollars on this setup and everything but if you look at the individual priced items for my setup a lot of these products they're below the 200 dollars range i would say 90 percent of it to 99 percent of it stuff i think the only thing that's super expensive is probably these Gobi hexagon panels and i still like i said don't really recommend those but a lot of them are like a hundred dollars or below i would say for a lot of the equipment that you see in the background and the reason why I'm saying that is because you can make an awesome looking background like people keep telling me about and everything that I have for fairly cheap. You don't have to spend $10,000, $1,000, $20,000 like these people say for their setups and stuff like that. And that's why I shot the video like I shot the video today because you don't have to make it fancy. You can make a decent, attractive looking setup for cheap if you shop correctly and a nine times out of ten a lot of these setup videos that you see when people talk about this stuff a lot of those products that would be super expensive or really add on to how much they're saying grand total they got for free like a sit stand desk that will cost like 500 600 bucks from like flexi spot or another company or something like that you know what i'm saying when you look at the price and all the accessories that they got and stuff like that it's like they didn't pay for it but the desk comes out to be like 500 300 800 dollars or something like that or like they'll talk about their rgb or something like that and there's no hate on flexi spot govi or anything like that but they'll send out like uh govi will send out a couple like rgb strips and hexagon panels and like all this other stuff and it's like oh like all these products for free and then we total them all up the rgb alone or wherever that they sent out was like 300 bucks and i'm telling you like two govi curtain lights for like 200 boom back wall your wall done or whatever for your streaming your video whatever done you know what i'm saying you don't have to spend money on anything else and nine times out of ten when people talk about their rgb and like their their setup or for streaming and doing content creation like the back wall that nobody will ever see on camera it's like you spent so much money to make it look good 
and nobody ever sees it but you you know what i'm saying and i know it's personal preference and it's their own setup and everything but it's like i would prioritize the money and what i'm doing to be visually appealing to what 90 percent of people are going to see for the backdrop and if that means you turn your chair around and your setup is your backdrop then that makes sense you know what i'm saying and i'm what i'm trying to drive home is just when you are dressing up your setup and you're making your setup focus on making your setup make sense and you can do your research if you need to wherever because like i said a lot of people don't even know about these goby curtain lights and like i said you can already imagine if the whole back wall wall wherever was just two co curtain lights you know what i'm saying like how unique and cool that would be or like i said these tonar panels or wherever covering the whole back wall and just having rgb strips doing cool designs or wherever through them and that would be fairly cheap and be different than what you are seeing nowadays with a lot of people's setups and that's what i kind of want to focus on like i said is the the value and how much you're spending and what you're getting you know price to performance make it make sense and again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money. I'm not trying to dictate how your setup needs to look or whatever or clown on anybody who has like a $20,000 setup or something like that. I, it's, it's, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that a lot of people think that my setup looks super expensive, unique, all that stuff. And it's like, I just did my research, found a whole bunch of cheap items and one month bought like an $80 item. Next month bought like a $100 item. You know what I'm saying? And over time, it just piled up and that's what a lot of people do for their setups but i see a lot of people you know they'll save up like twenty thousand dollars ten thousand dollars a thousand dollars and then just buy a whole bunch of stuff and when you look at it it's all like two hundred dollars for this rgb setup five hundred dollars for this rgb setup you know going with the most expensive brand out there and and it's like there's so many cheaper options out there and i understand you get what you pay for in some aspects but there are like budget items that will just be perfectly fine. And you have to do research and be like, okay, for this type of thing, don't go below this price point. So with that being said, this video has been too long. Hopefully I didn't take up too much of your time. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, again, if you found this video informative, helpful in any way, shape or form, then you can let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. If you're new to the channel and you want to see, like I said, the other two setups, or you want to see any videos of mine in the future, then if you feel this free to subscribe to the channel, definitely helps me out. And with that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.